Hello, you're watching Euronews Now. I'm Takumbo Salako with your top stories. There's been widespread Western condemnation of Russia's recognition of breakaway republics in eastern Ukraine and its decision to send in peacekeeping troops. The EU is now meeting to consider what sanctions to impose in Moscow. We'll have the latest from Brussels. And after Boris Johnson says it's time to protect yourself from COVID, we'll have reaction to the UK Prime Minister's removal of England's remaining restrictions. President Vladimir Putin has raised the stakes in the Ukraine crisis by signing decrees recognizing the independence of two breakaway separatist regions in the east of the country. The decrees include provision for Russian troops to perform what are described as peacekeeping functions in Luhansk and Donetsk. Later, Putin addressed the Russian people. The choice of security must not pose a threat to other states. And Ukraine's accession to NATO is a direct threat to Russia's security. Within hours, Ukrainian officials and several media reports began quoting witnesses as seeing unusually large columns of military hardware moving through the breakaway city of Donetsk. A response from Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky to Putin's actions came in a lengthy televised address. We expect clear and effective support steps from our partners. It's very important now to see who our true friend and partner is and who will continue to scare the Russian Federation with words. We are committed to a political diplomatic settlement and not to succumb to any provocations. Underscoring the urgency of the situation, the UN Security Council has met for a rare nighttime emergency meeting at the request of Ukraine, the US and others. Meanwhile, there's been condemnation from President Biden, who said he had signed an executive order to deny Russia the chance to profit from its blatant violations of international law. With evacuations from rebel-held Ukraine continuing, the EU, US and allies say they're launching sanction packages in a coordinated final attempt to deter Russia from a large-scale invasion. Kiev residents express shock and fear after Russian President Vladimir Putin defied Western threats of sanctions by recognizing separatist rebel regions of Ukraine and what he called a peacekeeping role for Russian troops. I am very shocked because I have a lot of family members in the east. I am actually from Donetsk. It's my eight year living in Kiev, so this is the scariest news after eight years. I don't think badly about Russians, and I understand them perfectly. They too do not want this war. Some residents of rebel-controlled Donetsk celebrated with fireworks, waving Russian flags and chanting Russia, Russia. Locals came to the streets to celebrate the news. This is what I will tell my children, which I have plenty. That's why I'm trying to remember this moment. I cannot put all of the emotions into words. I'm happy. I'm happy. This cannot be described. These are unforgettable emotions. For eight years, this situation was unfolding. And at last, we are the next people's republic. While recognizing the independence of the self-proclaimed so-called Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics, Vladimir Putin did not recognize the very statehood and sovereignty of Ukraine. He called it a made-up state that, according to him, quote, was entirely created by Russia, unquote. He accused Ukraine of not respecting the history and not appreciating the past. His one-hour-long speech was full of criticism of Ukraine and of the West, particularly NATO. He accused the alliance of not respecting its promises and commitments to Russia. It has been weeks that Western leaders have been warning of a probable Russian invasion of Ukraine, and the crisis just got to its most dangerous phase yet. The recognition of the independence of the self-proclaimed territories of Ukraine 
would allow Russia to openly send its military forces to the areas and then try to expand the borders of those territories. The European Union reacted within minutes. The President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, said it is a violation of the international law, the territorial integrity of Ukraine and of the Minsk agreements, until recently the only basis for a diplomatic solution. Sasha Vakulina, Euronews, Kyiv. Vladimir Putin's decision to recognize Donetsk and Luhansk as independent regions is a blow to European leaders who have been trying to de-escalate the crisis in Ukraine. Now a list of proportionate sanctions is expected to be released by Brussels, as our international correspondent Annelies Borges reports. Several European leaders have condemned in the strongest possible terms the decision by Russia's President Vladimir Putin to recognize the Donetsk People's Republic and the Luhansk People's Republic in eastern Ukraine, calling the move a blatant violation of international law and of the Minsk agreements. France, Germany and the UK have all voiced their disappointment, with UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson calling the decision a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and France's President Emmanuel Macron calling on an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council. All these leaders have been engaged in negotiations in the past few weeks and for them, the recent uptick in violence in the Donbass region was already bad enough and now this is a huge blow. Does it mean an all-out war is about to start? Not necessarily. Vladimir Putin has insisted there will be no annexation of these territories, at least for now. But this recognition will mean support, and that is a significant move. When asked whether or not this was the end of the road for diplomacy, Emmanuel Macron's chief advisor said neither yes or no. Uh, for now, uh, Vladimir Putin has made a choice, according to Emmanuel Macron's team, and that choice will have consequences. There will be a meeting in Brussels this Tuesday between representatives of EU member states and they will decide on a new list of individuals and groups that will be sanctioned. These sanctions will not be the same as the ones decided in case of a Russian incursion into Ukraine. Uh, they will be proportionate according to diplomats. The question now is, of course, will they be enough to stop Russia on its tracks and prevent Vladimir Putin from making an even more dramatic move. Annelise Borges is in Paris for Euronews. Moments after Russia ordered troops into eastern Ukraine, U.S. President Joe Biden signed an emergency order banning investment and trade within the separatist regions. Further sanctions against Russia will no doubt be on the agenda later today when Ukraine's foreign minister holds an emergency meeting with his U.S. counterpart in Washington. Our reporter Ray Suarez has more. Late Monday here in the United States, events picked up pace and urgency closely watched at the U.S. State Department, the White House, and at the United Nations in New York. Late Monday, it was reported by the State Department that U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken shared a phone call with his Ukrainian counterpart, the Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba. The two men stressed a swift American response to Russia's recognition of what the State Department calls the so-called republics of Donetsk and Luhansk, controlled by Russian proxy authorities in eastern Ukraine. The two foreign ministers, according to the American readout, discussed further strong measures the U.S. announced, and Secretary Blinken reiterated additional moves would be forthcoming. Secretary Blinken told his Ukrainian counterpart he looked forward to meeting him in Washington, D.C. to continue discussions on all these issues, all talk of a future meeting between President Biden and President Putin seems to have disappeared. Ray Suarez for Euronews in Washington. If you want to get more on what's happening, of course, Russia's decision to annex those two separatist regions in eastern Ukraine, we've got a live blog on our website. Do check it out for the latest news. We'll be back in a few moments.